it, it's funny that that's still kind of in question when it's like I've heard so many stories from strippers and even actual hookers and sex sex workers in general who are just like yeah I get so many customers who it's like they they don't want to see me take my clothes off they don't want to sleep with me they just want me to be there yeah and, it... and some of them are like I quit not because the work was a problem but just because I couldn't handle the emotional burden I I know somebody who who had exactly that journey now she was doing it to get through school but still mm -hmm. but it is I know a lot of guys who are very very shouldn't say a lot but I, I know enough who are very guarded surrounding only fans women people that are sort of in that gray area of sex work in that there's no actual sex mm -hmm. it's about desire and lust and i i do think that our entire relationship with sexuality is toxic and that's why we get some of these things that don't don't make any sense we've made the entire idea of being attracted to other people so very toxic that mm -hmm. finding a healthy starting point is difficult and i do think that there are a lot of people just taking what they can get in fiction uh i'm gonna have a lot more to say on that we get onto the toxic men uh episode but sticking oh yeah i, I am saving shadow heart because i know this is going to upset a lot of people and, and this is why when you said let's go for the safe one let's go for the soothe first to make <laughs> the medicine go down with the toxic men i know what the reactions are with shadow heart and i i want to i want to juxtapose this so that people know i'm being fair i want to juxtapose shadow heart with morgan and liliana from dragon age origins Mm -hmm. um because we had a wonderful you missed this song because you were working we had this great <sighs> fight in the writers group uh ah! the last one about the the morgan alistair choice at the end of dragon age origins and one one guy hadn't seen it and the other two guys were defending it and everything he was saying was exactly right about how it made no sense and it came out of nowhere and I, even though i knew intellectually is 100 percent right i remember sitting there angry at the game for far too long it was a hard choice and i knew i was being manipulated and i knew it was there so that no path no romance option no play style got a totally easy ride and because it was because alistair was so my crack you know, nerdy, not terribly sexually experienced, funny, cute, just nice guy, like huggable. Mm -hmm. Um, does not not necessarily smart, but smarter than he thinks he is because he's been so beat up. Like that is my fucking crack, man. And uh, he's got to sleep with the slutty witch, and they have to have a kid. Or he's gonna die. Fuck. <laughs> See, I, I'm I'm sitting here thinking about the writers group, and I think I know. I'll tell you. I'll tell you how there. And it, it was it was really really good because I said that's the magic. That's the suspension of disbelief. They took a stupid thing, a really stupid left field plot device and made you make a hard choice and it, it was so complex because one you were breaking your gray warden oath because you were cheating the whole you have to die along with the 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 demon i forget what they're called now the old something uh old gods now refers to alan wake to, to, we need new names for things but you know it was you're breaking your warden oath but you totally understand why and if you're a male warden, you can choose to have the the creepy magic ritual baby with Morgan. And the thing about Morgan is because she knows that this is her purpose, she has a really, really fucked up relationship. She's a lot more like Asterion in Baldur's Gate 3 than she is Shadowheart. And, and, and I've see, here's the interesting thing is it's like, 
dividing it toxic women with toxic men, it's a bit complicated because like the reason we have to talk about shadow heart in the toxic men is because of what it brings out in men is a certain type of toxicity. And, and that's toxicity is not just being bad. It's being poisonous. Yes. And like, by contrast, we could bring up a Starian here because I've been watching the fangirls. Oh, okay. Okay. Let's end on that. <laughs> I want to do a whole video on that. We're not going to have time. Let's go okay, so forward and then jump to how a Starian fango is essentially our shadow heart in real life. And yeah. that's, Yeah. But but I do want to talk about something related to toxic women first, though. Just yeah, we're, we're to... rolling up just so that when we talk about what's wrong with her, people won't get triggered and just tune out the message. Because I get it, right? I get yeah. it. Toxic women are appealing. Well, even even beyond that, it's like you know we've we've kind of conditioned that you know there is something the taming of the shrew, kind of that toxic woman who a strong man can come in and dominate but it, but i want to talk about toxic women and other women for a minute well because that that applies to shadow heart as well the fact yeah. that shadow heart is constantly triangulating lazel but you know it's you know something you and i have talked about a, a bit on here and quite a bit in private conversations is you know, there's this idea of the divine sisterhood <laughs> and how all girls are friends and we all love <laughs> each other. And the only time we don't get along is because patriarchy yeah. gets in the way. I don't buy that, though, because whenever I get around women, it's like I want to have more friends who are women and who are you know, girly girls. Cause like, I want to go out to high tea and get dressed up and be fancy and stuff like that. I'll do that as long as I can wear a tux. <laughs> sure. You know what? That works. <laughs> I do high tea. I actually like high teas. Yeah. So it, it's, but whenever I get around women, yeah. there is this toxic positivity. And it used to be just, if you were kind of different, it was you were the odd girl out or you were a pick me yeah and if you didn't fall right into line you were a pick me and oh it must just be because you want boys to like you now we have the fancy term internalized misogyny where i've seen i've seen women saying oh if you don't get along with other girls it's because you have internalized misogyny or wow you know men have convinced women that we don't get along and we don't like each other. And I'm like, no one ever told me women didn't get along except for the women, the girls and the women who have given me a hard time. Yeah. That's because that's it, part of the toxicity though. That's manipulative, right? If you don't, if you've had a bad run in life, it's your fault. Yeah. And it's like, even my last two days at work, the store man, the, head manager wasn't there first day manager was a woman second day manager was a guy I was so much happier the second day because like when it was with a woman I you know personalities clashed well we we had a uh, interesting discussion on the discord uh I don't remember what channel it was on that how women in management have this uh like raw wound when it comes to certain things and it's because for so many years in corporate life women were like the sith mm -hmm. whenever you mentored another woman it was just a matter of time before she'd shank you and take your spot yeah uh it's in socializing and dating it's in socializing and dating yeah mm -hmm. and, yeah okay because i said that it's um uh it is you're constantly being criticized under the guise of suggestions and i mean i'm just like noted because i don't know what else to say and that's considered bitchy mm -hmm. that's considered not handling criticism and it's actually the opposite it's like i've heard you i've listened i'm not gonna react right away i'm gonna think about it 
saying anything more to me right now is not better. It's just more. And you may confuse the issue. I don't know what else to say. I have noted your criticism. And so I started saying criticism accepted. And that was also taken as bitchy. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what to fucking say that is because I've heard you is just either more bitchy or an adv- an, an, an invitation to talk more. And I don't want to hear anymore. I need to digest what I've already heard. And, you know, it, it's one thing when it's a valid suggestion, but so often it's more just, I don't like the way you're behaving. That's yes. So I'm going to exactly. tell you how I want you to behave. So it's like, there is a huge difference between, Hey, here's my idea of how we could handle something, or maybe we could try this versus do what I want. Well, and what it ultimately comes down to is suppress the honest but uncomfortable thing because it was uncomfortable. And I don't I don't play that way. Mm-mm. But it it is really I I mean, I don't care, but that's because I'm terrible at being a girl. And so I am so used to people expecting a different reaction than it's the only way I can function. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the only way I can function. I keep warning people. My inner voice is Kratos. And that's what noted is. It's like, you don't want me speaking right now because I go into tactical mode and it does become a, okay, this is becoming a debate when it isn't (laughs) i there are certain things i have to not say because it was things said in private and i i cannot stand the chat log dumps i can't stand when people start putting i find it toxic behavior because the minute you start putting screen caps of a conflict online all the context at the time goes away people are pouring over every single word which wasn't happening at the time and there's just no winning it the 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 everything is a trial is such a toxic behavior when what it really comes down to is is there trust You know, do we believe that the person meant well, made an honest mistake, or are they are they being toxic and actually manipulating the situation? And it's got so what do you think? Because so many people I find are manipulative and they don't realize how manipulative the behavior they're doing is. That's the thing is it's very learned from seeing other toxic people usually i'm sorry but usually a toxic mother and and that's the thing i know i had to recognize a lot of the proper girling techniques that i was terrible at were actually extremely manipulative Mm -hmm. but when you stop doing them you're so heavily criticized for not being nice and that's the bizarre thing Is it's like, I I love the line from the Into the Woods musical. You're not good. You're not bad. You're just nice. Nice. Yeah. It's you, you're lukewarm. You straddle the line and you behave in a way that is acceptable. Right. And And where you can be a little manipulative, you can do this and that, but it's toxic. It's just yeah. a show. Yeah. And and that's Shadowheart in a nutshell. Mm-hmm. Um, Shadowheart, again, major spoilers here, guys. Uh, I will try to not, I will try to not actually spoil the experience, though I do think that the Shadowheart experience is better if you don't know what's coming, because I don't think, having sat with this for a really long time and spent way too many hours dealing with shadow heart to see whether i thought they were doing it intentionally 
and I don't. Okay. Um, she gets away with being toxic. She is rewarded for being toxic. And what I wanted to find out, because the stuff with Asterion is so self-aware that I wanted to see if they were making a commentary on the fact that this is good girl behavior. Mm -hmm. But no, no, I think somebody was just working out a very toxic girl fantasy. Because you, the thing about toxic behavior is it works. It works in the short term. And so you first meet Shadowheart in what's called a Githyank, uh, no, an Illithid Nautiloid. She's, she's in, she's a damsel in distress. She's in the, the pod, the Illithid pod with the artifact that becomes significant. Now, why the artifact stuck to her, I'm not quite sure. Uh, they never actually explained that element that I caught, but the artifact's one of these very important things that then sticks to you. Mm -hmm. Now, Shadowheart in the first act is extensively rewritten to make her nicer from early access. I played in early access, both her and Will were significantly reworked. And so again, some of the toxicity may be a result of that, but not all of it, because Shadowheart's a priestess of Shar. And Shar is one of the evil deities in the Forgotten Realms pantheon. She's a they've they've mixed her with one of the other deities from Forgotten Realms. It is actually a goddess of deception. Shar is actually more about forgetting like running away from your problems, just never learning because you just pack it all away. Well then. Yeah. But Shadowheart is a trained manipulator and torturer. And that is so subtle that a lot of people miss it. You actually go to a place called the House of Grief in Baldur's Gate, way into Act 3. Mm -hmm. After people have spent Oh, poor Shadowheart. Oh, we need to save her. Oh, she can't help it. She can't help it. I keep saying she can't help it. She has reasons. You go to the rooms in the House of Grief where she was taught to manipulate, impersonate, and torture people. And people still don't see it. She's that toxic. You know, I have a character who, when she was really originally developed, torture was going to be part of her repertoire. Yeah. Because she was... Long story. There's a reason I took that out. Well, torture is a unique thing. And there's a very funny torture character in Act 1 of, of Baldur's Gate. I still love the Priest of Leviathar. <laughs> He's one of my favorite throwaway characters in the whole thing. And the skill he gives you is actually pretty useful, too. But... The thing is, Shadowheart, her name wasn't Shadowheart. And even though she she finds out that Shadowheart was the name given to her by the people who wiped her memories, manipulated and indoctrinated her, she keeps the name because Shadowheart is a much as much a part of her as the other name. What? That's a choice. That's a choice. Especially when it turns out she tortured her own biological parents. Lovely. And there, there is a scene. She she was part of torturing her own mother insane. And her parents forgive her, say they love her, and say she's the hope for the future of their religion right before she kills them. Holy fuck. Oh, yeah. And that jump to the end, you know, that jump from the fact that Shadowheart has bad ideas. She she takes you into numerous circumstances that are really unsafe, very time consuming. And you have to get her out of at least two major jams because she's in way over her head. But then... She's triangulating Lazel, not because there's anything wrong with Lazel, because she stole the artifact and Lazel's trying to get it back. So she's trying to make Lazel into the bad guy because she stole something. Like, that's practically a Taylor Swift song right there. 
see that's like one of my complaints with how the netflix show handled yennefer oh yeah is how they took her from just being an annoyed sorceress who's stuck in a merchant's house because yeah. the town is trying to outlaw magic mm-hmm. to actively abusing the citizens because she doesn't want to pay taxes oh um jennifer in netflix witcher is basically Casador in baldur's gate 3 asterian's master oh lovely oh it j- just that scene i'm like you don't understand yennefer because yennefer the reason i like her as a character is that she's yennefer is an example of a toxic person who knows she's toxic but the alternative is to be nothing and she alter- will she will tell you to your face what she is knowing uh-huh. you won't believe her she's more like morrigan in in dragon age origins and in that sense what she'll also do is in the books something she'll do is she will create a situation where she's in the wrong and she knows it yep but it's a girl just leave me Yep, I'm bad for you. She doesn't yep. say it outright. And for yep. those who are wondering, it's the story of Shard of Ice where she is cheating on Geralt with a sorcerer who has asked her to marry him. And she's doing it because she can't accept Geralt's love yep. because she doesn't love herself. So she considers herself unworthy. And it's like, that that's the story where I realized... That's that's a story where it's like, if you don't understand Yennefer, you either didn't read that story or you read it and you didn't understand it. And and that's an example of a of a character who is mad, bad, and dangerous. You know, I would I would argue Yennefer is actually more byronic than toxic. Mm-hmm. She is the world of the Witcher doesn't give women that many options. No. And it's like the world itself is so toxic. There's no way to survive but, in that world without. Also, though, Yennefer has consequences. Mm-hmm. There are consequences for her behavior. She loses. She destroys. She gets spent. She spends the first two games being called horrible things behind her back when she's not even a character, you know? And- and even just in the books, she makes mistakes. Yeah. Like the whole coup at Than Ed. Yeah. And basically the the entirety of the last three or four books are because Yennefer thought she was doing the right thing. Yeah. Only for it to turn out that one, she was being manipulated. Two, mm-hmm. she miscalculated and didn't understand just what a powder keg she was taking Siri into. And that's why the next and, couple of books are the three of them separated. And the thing about Yennefer is that she only ranks two for three on the toxic people test. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, yeah, she is very self-centered. You know, yes. she is she is abusive and manipulative. She does disrespect emotional and physical boundaries, but Definitely. she she doesn't want sympathy or validation. She actively rejects it. And the other thing is the story does not apologize for her. That's right. And the the story story knows exactly who she is. Yeah. And the story doesn't want you to love her because of the toxic traits. It wants you to love her because of what she does in defiance of those toxic traits. Well, and it, it also shows what happens to people when they are aware of the illusions surrounding them. I think part of the reason she can't accept Geralt's love is she doesn't know that it's real. They're bound together by this spell, mm-hmm. which is why I ultimately chose to break that bond in the game. Because, yeah, putting myself in her shoes, how would I know this guy is actually with me out of his own free will it's part of this magical pact Mm -hmm. like i i could never rely on that and that's why like toxic doesn't mean bad character well it is interesting because sapkowski has said 
the pact was never supposed to be a big deal. Wow. Like it was just a moment where Geralt made a choice to prove his selflessness. Okay. That instead of sacrificing Yennefer to remove his own curse so he could be human, he chose to save someone else. Include, especially since and, Jennifer hadn't been too nice to him. And that's it, 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 what happens, male writers, sorry to interrupt song, but that's yeah. what happens when male writers write a romance only from the male point of view. <laughs> they miss why it's so important. Please continue. <laughs> yeah. So he was just like, no, it, it was just something that was supposed to show Geralt's character and it was never supposed to carry through really but that's so major <laughs> well I, I i'm pretty sure credit. some guys <laughs> I, you know I, I give him credit for i mean he's a cranky cuss right I, i'm pretty sure he's single too oh 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 <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> that, that, that's a whole other thing but i mean yeah i i will i will defend yennefer i will defend philippa eilhart because they are deliberate their flaws are deliberate when we go to shadow heart it just feels like remember i said that thing about that stupid but very powerful choice at the end of dragon age origins is designed to kick a certain type of player in the balls Mm -hmm. the particular type of woman that's gonna like shadow heart never faces consequences Nothing is ever her fault. And I cannot accept validating that and rewarding that because women like Shadowheart demand sympathy, demand validation. You must give it to them or else. Yeah. And that's the big difference between her and Asterion, which we will talk about in the Toxic Men show. But, you know, TLDR, he it's all a joke to him. He has this very shallow, tell me I'm pretty, Mm -hmm. but he doesn't actually, he's more like Yennefer of none of it actually feels good. It's all superficial. It's all just hunting behavior. Shadowheart, women like Shadowheart crave being told it's okay, even when it's not. Mm -hmm. And whenever somebody needs it to be okay, even when it's not, that person will drain you of everything you have and then blame you for not having more to give. Yeah. She's freaking dangerous. And it scares me that so many guys, they see it, they deny it, and then they admit it, and they still... And if, if you know, some of my guy friends who really like Shadowheart Actually, there's this one woman I know who really likes Shadowheart and everybody's sort of like, of course, because that's the sort of women she goes through for in real life as well. (laughs) But uh, that's the thing. The people who like Shadowheart don't separate what they like in fantasy fiction from what they like in the real world. They keep falling for that con again and again and again. Well, I will say, I think there is a distinction to be made between people who like shadow heart or sorry let me put this yeah let me try and phrase this properly female attracted people or right yeah we, we people who are attracted to women yeah and who thus are attracted to shadow heart people who are attracted to white women with no ass <laughs> Let's just go well, there. <laughs> well if you are attracted to shadow heart and people like her that's different from just people who like her as a character uh, there's like, nothing to like about her as a character she's yeah. written by committee i i'm sure there are some people out there who do and it says something about them but it does say different things about them see i'm i'm just offended with the fact that larry and they do this with every game and it offends me every time <laughs> They make the game, they do lengthy early access. They released major parts of act one for people to play for months. I played through it three times. Wasn't Um, that years ago? It it was a while ago. Yeah. And then they just rewrote two characters. 
And it's like, that's bullshit. That's exactly what made me lose interest in the Left for Dead franchise because I interviewed Chet from Valve and every answer was we focus grouped it. It was a focus group. It's like, it's what the group liked the best. It's the character we got the best feedback on. That is not taking a risk. That yeah. is very corporate. That is very commercial. That is not creativity. That is pandering. And I mean, of course, I like Shadowheart. Well, when they have a do over so that she's tailor made to be superficially likable, of course you do. But why, why do women have to be nice to be good? You cannot be a truly good person and be nice, which is where you get Jahira, who is a wonderful character. They nail her in Baldur's Gate 3. But then they don't realize what the reactions to her from other people are signaling because they're constantly going on about she's old, unpleasant, and a terrible mother. She isn't even a mother song. She never had kids. She took what? a bunch of kids. She took a bunch of kids who were orphaned and gave them a place to stay and then stayed away because their job was dangerous and didn't want to bring danger to their doorstep. They were dealing with an adversary that can shape change. And she left instructions saying, if I show up, kill me on sight. Uh, <sighs> and okay. Asterian was being a dick by saying, well, she's, you know, no better than the rest of us. She's a terrible mother. And he was being a dick, but the game just too many old jokes too much she's a terrible mother joke she's not a fucking mother she wasn't a mother she was more of a father role in that well, she, sort of medievalist tradition she financially provided for those children she performed an act of charity yeah she looked after them that that is actually altruistic you know it just shows she was selfless jahira's not manipulative at all she blames herself for everything her speech is blunt. The way she talks to people is blunt, uh -huh. but truthful. She's not trying to be abusive. She's just been lived through a lot. Which but, does tend to be a masculine trait. Yeah. And she cares so much for other people. It's why she has trouble expressing herself. Jahira has a huge amount of empathy. She avoids attention. She doesn't want sympathy. She's constantly beating herself up. And, and in order to earn, earn approval from her, you have to be sort of, well, you made a mistake, you know, in that sort of, we all do it. She is the complete opposite of toxic. Mm -hmm. And all the game does is say how old and terrible she is. And lovely. Play Play in this game as, you know, assigned female at birth and over 40. I'm just like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. And guys get so uncomfortable when I say why. And it's like, yeah, because that's that's what happens when you grow up, you're on your shit. You ain't cute anymore. No guy wants to put a baby in you. And you're like, oh, now I get to be a person. You know? It... Look, I don't know if this game itself is touted as progressive. It won game of the year. This of is true. Of course it's progressive. <laughs> well, okay. But like, I was talking to my boyfriend about that. And I'm like, look, obviously it was not my first choice. I have issues with it just as someone on the outside. But I have little doubt that the committee who votes on this was sitting there going, look, if we don't give it to Baldur's Gate 3, the fangirls will riot. Does anyone want to see the fangirls riot? Well, no one wants to see the fangirls riot. We're giving it to Baldur's is, Gate 3. The problem is the Tears of the Kingdom fans rioted. They are still rioting as people are listening to this. It's been like, oh, Lord. I have been loving the freaking out, but no, I, I, I really think, and again, there are parts of Baldur's Gate 3 I absolutely love, Yeah, but it is a mess. It is not as tight as The Witcher 3 was even at launch where it was 
partially broken. And I'll just say Tears of the Kingdom was my bet. Tears of the King. I get the only reason Tears of the Kingdom didn't get Game of the Year is its menus. I guarantee you that. And a lot of people didn't get what they were doing with that game. Baldur's Gate 3 is great with the smarty pants juries at those award shows because they validate their kinks and horrible behavior. Yeah. And so, like I was saying, it's like, okay, so it it gets credit for being progressive. Yeah. But all this stuff you're telling me, it's really not. It's such a surface level. But at the same time, in my experience, that is a perfect definition of the progressive movement. Well, the progressive movement. A, a, certain, a, a certain segment of it. Yeah, I want to land the plane a little bit here just because yeah. I think we I think we've kind of talked. But this does tie in because the way the progressive movement is structured now, it does really protect toxic women because Mm -hmm. the minute your marching orders are believe women yeah any toxic person is gonna go you have to believe me so i don't have to tell the truth yeah and And, so in the next section where i believe we're going to talk about jonathan majors a bit so yeah we're going to talk about jonathan majors a bit because the oh that oh boy yeah but yeah but that's the thing the reason i took so much shit For that, no, I don't subscribe to believe women. Mm -hmm. I do subscribe to the fact that the vast majority of people who say that they've been abused are telling the truth. If somebody tells you in confidence that something happened, believe them until you see evidence otherwise. I absolutely believe that. But with the internet and with the fact that, you know, there is a portion of the population, it's very small. But there's a portion of the population with those sort of personality disorders Mm -hmm. that, you know, narcissistic personality disorder, uh, certain types of borderline. I got to be careful because not all borderline people do this, Mm -hmm. Um, but there are certain conditions and certain types of people that will exploit the fact that you can um, accuse and they have to prove the person you accused has to prove a non-event. You don't have to prove you're telling the truth. And the thing is, it's impossible to prove a non-event. It's impossible to prove a non-event. I'm I'm an example of somebody who keeps a a, a woman keeps accusing me of insane stuff. Her latest thing is that I I am I support the physical abuse of men. Because of that story I've told when I was 19 years old, a guy, uh, ex-boyfriend, followed me to a bar, put his hands on me three times. I said, don't touch me twice. The third time I threw him through a door. That's not abuse. Isn't this the woman who has been accused of abuse? Well, she, she, she did abuse her boyfriend. Yeah. And the funny thing is, it was over a phone. I don't know what it is about toxic women and needing to see your phone. I don't know what it is. I'm very uncomfortable having other people's phones. I don't want to see shit because everything can look bad when you don't have context. If you don't trust somebody, don't you have a choice. You can recognize there are reasons you don't trust them, but you're continuing to stay in a relationship or it's time to get out of the relationship because there's good reasons not to trust them. Yeah. But going going through your partner's phone, you're going to see something. It's going to look bad. It's a bad idea. Yeah. And, you know, to wrap this up, I'm and going back to, you know, toxic women and especially a bit of advice for people who are attracted to women and even who just spend time with women and if you're looking for red flags i'm going to quote maya angelou for a minute when someone tells you who they are believe them Mm -hmm. so if someone tells a story or if they straight up say hey i'm this i'm that i do this believe them but also if they tell a story about screwing someone over or having toxic traits Mm -hmm. 
they're probably toxic. Yeah, I couldn't help it. I couldn't help it is the That's big another one. one. Yeah. Yes, you can. And somebody saying I couldn't help it is pretty much telling you they're going to do it again. You know, um, wow, I worked really easy on Shadowheart. I'm proud of myself. Another Taylor Swift quote. Don't blame me. Love made me crazy. If it doesn't, you ain't doing it right. Oh, God. Yeah. The the whole women are just overcome thing. <sighs> that That's probably going to come up in the well, that comes up in the toxic relationships thing, because that's where it gets mm-hmm. difficult. Is it is it the woman who is toxic or is it the relationship that the 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 messages that society send men and women about relationships that make some people batshit insane the minute they get in romantic relationships? And that's something I'm really glad we're going to talk about, because that's an important subject. Yeah, it's something I had to do a lot of work on myself. So that's a good teaser. This is this has been Two Women Talking with me, Leanna Kersner, Tomboy. Song W. Erickson, Girly Girl. And uh, you can get Song's book, Calidus Chronicles, Volume 1. If you want to read romance without a lot of toxicity, that's something I really enjoy about it. Uh, you can check it out on Amazon. Links in the description box. How was that song? Was that a good... Uh segue into a plug because that is sincere hey maybe that can be my amazon i haven't been able to figure out what to put on the amazon thing okay because it's a whole bunch of short stories but it's non-toxic romances perfect that's a good way of doing it all right so next time we'll be doing toxic men you won't want to miss that until then song as usual you have the last word like i said when someone tells you who they are believe them And if you do find yourself drawn to toxic traits, I I would dwell on that for a bit and do a little self-analysis.